And Congressman Peter King, thank you very much for joining me. How are you? Liz, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am well, thanks. Um, I wanted to catch up with you a little bit about this 9-11 Health and Compensation Act. We saw a very large dust-up about uh, on the House floor between you and Anthony Weiner, and we'll get back to that in a second. But right. then when the House returned for this sort of very quick session, we did not see this come back to the floor. So where is it at this point? Yeah, we had a uh, meeting of the New York delegation, which was basically, I think, uh, 22 or 23 Democrats and me. Uh, were there, and uh, <laughs> Charlie Rangel was he chaired the meeting. And uh, anyway, uh, we've pretty much agreed to try to bring it back up the second week that we're back in September. So that'll prob probably be the week of September 20th. And to try to find a way that we can get it through uh, with a minimum of controversy or try to uh, smooth over some of the you know, differences. Uh, now, just to make it clear, I voted for the bill, I co sponsored the bill, I fully support it. The idea is to find a way to get to the House floor in a way that it can pass uh, to overcome either Republican opposition or also pro uh, problems within, in the Democratic Party where they have some concerns about different amendments. So uh, we have the votes. We have 255 votes for it. But it's uh, basically without going into all the details uh, is to try to find a way to guarantee we, that we pass it. You know, we should never okay. not have a bill pass when there are 255 votes. Okay, but what, how are you going to bridge this gap? Because the shorthand here is that the Republicans put some quote-unquote poison pills that have to do with immigration attached to the bill that the marginal Democrats don't want to vote for. And so the Democrats retaliated by requiring more than a simple majority. And so that seems like a standoff to me, and particularly if you try and do this before the primary. And the primaries, or even yeah, actually before the general, the midterms, I, I, do you really believe that you're going to be able to bridge that gap? And how are you going to do it? It's not going to be easy, and I really don't want to say how we're going to try to do it, because if I said that I was going to propose this, or if uh, Anthony Weiner or uh, Carol Maloney said they were going to suggest something else, it might make it harder to get people in each of our parties to go along with it. So a lot of what we're doing right now is behind the scenes, uh, and I think we agreed when you have that many votes for it, though, we have to find a way to get it through. So a lot of it's going to be some behind the scenes negotiating, uh, with other elements in our parties. Uh, and it's, again, uh, you know, you laid out what the problems are. I don't want to answer all that in detail because that would be tipping off people as to what we're going to do. And I'm saying people who may try to block the bill. So I'm not trying to be cute or clever, but uh, I don't want to be saying too much other than the fact that we are going to try to work together and uh, where either party can help the other, we're going to do that as well. Okay, you came out with this very interesting sort of bipartisan joint statement with Bob Zimmerman, who is a Long Island guy. He is a DNC committee man and a very right. longtime Democratic donor. And he offered some bipartisan support to you. And then subsequently, Anthony Weiner, who had that tirade on the House floor and, and accused you of not working hard enough to pass this, um, said, responded sort of negatively, I thought you guys had buried the hatchet. What, where is your relationship with Anthony Weiner right now, and do you think that you're going to be able to mend that going forward? Yeah, first of all, I don't take any of this personally. The important thing is to get the bill through. Uh, after we had the meeting with the entire delegation on Tuesday, I guess it was, uh, Anthony and I, I asked Anthony to you know, step off to the side, and uh, either I asked him or he asked me. I'm not trying to, you know, we, I guess jointly decided to go up to the side by ourselves. And the uh, <laughs> first thing I wanted to do, and he wanted to do, is to sort of uh, work out what we were going to say when people in the media like you would ask us questions, because I didn't want to answer the question in a way which would make it difficult for him, and I was hoping he wouldn't do it in a way that would make it difficult for me. So we agreed on that. And uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any bad blood. I mean, uh, you know, I certainly don't, don't take it personally. Uh, and uh, so the idea is to... Uh, the fact that Anthony is now out there as a main uh, protagonist on the bill, actually he can be very helpful because uh, Anthony is in a position where he can maybe bring some people over. Uh, as far as uh, Robert Zimmerman, it was, I, th I thought it was very helpful that he came forward. I think it showed that uh, this has to be bipartisan and to have you know, the Democratic National Committeeman working with the Republican on the issue, I thought it made my position easier. Uh, in that it showed, uh, in case anyone didn't know, how sincere I was on this issue. I mean, I'm an original co-sponsor. I worked on it for over five years. And so I, I think it had an impact. But as far as uh, Anthony Weiner and I, uh, you know, listen, uh, 
Anthony and I have never had any real trouble before. Uh, we had about a week there of going back and forth. I think, quite frankly, the act was wearing thin, uh, and the issue was too big for you know for either of us to be carrying it forward. So uh, I and I also to give Anthony credit, he was on a TV show the next day uh, where they were going after him pretty heavily, and he resisted any opportunity to take a shot at me, which to me was a, a real demonstration of good faith on his part. Do you, uh, just, not, just to press you a little bit on this, and I understand that you don't want to tip your hand in yeah. terms of your approach, but do you think that you are going to be able behind the scenes to convince your Republican colleagues not to put that quote-unquote poison pill attachment amendments regarding immigration? I mean, one of the things that Wiener criticized you on was that he thought that, he didn't, that you didn't press your colleagues hard enough to either to vote for this, and, and it is, uh, let's remember, we're talking about something that means a lot to New York regarding 9-11 victims, uh, sorry, 9-11 survivors, so uh, people who had worked on the pile and that kind of thing in terms of getting health care. So can you really convince, do you think, behind the scenes, your Republican colleagues, not to put up roadblocks that would lead to this bill's demise again?